let's say I want to find the unit price of something. Unit price um, is the cost for one of something. So if I know it's there's four shirts for let's say twenty four dollars, well then I know the unit price. This is the unit price. One shirt key is one here for six dollars. How do I know that, and how can I be sure of it? Well, one way to think about it is the formula of dollars divided by quantity. Dollars divided by quantity equals unit price. This always works, and I think of it as dollars for every quantity. And that's what I want to know, how many dollars I'm spending for each quantity. In this case, I'm spending six dollars for each one shirt. So I do dollars divided by quantity. It's an easy way for me to remember it. Why does it work? Well, let's say you have six dollars. Well, you know, sorry, let's stick with this example. Let's say we have twenty-four dollars, and that's the cost of a shirt. So if you take twenty-four dollars and you divide it four ways, what are you finding? You're finding out how much money would go towards each of the shirts you're buying. So that would effectively be unit price. Here's the unit price of each of the four shirts. Another way of thinking about this is to reverse it. What if you did the quantity you're buying divided by the price you're spending? This tells you the unit quantity, not the price. And I'll explain what that means. Unit quantity is something we don't often actually talk about. Although I'm sure it's useful, it's not wrong to think about it, it's just sometimes a little bit more confusing. So now let's reverse it. We have four shirts. And now we're dividing it 24 ways. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, whew, 23, 24. So we're taking the four shirts and we're dividing it amongst the dollars we're spending. So what does each, how much of a shirt really do you get for each dollar you spend? That's what we're figuring out right here. How many shirts for each dollar? And the only nice thing about these two connections is that there'll always be reciprocals of each other. So if we had six dollars in one case, this will be one-sixth each of them. I'm not going to write this 24 times, but you get the idea, I think, that what that one-sixth means is that you're getting one-sixth of a shirt for each of the $24 you spend. So if you walked in there and gave them a dollar, they would give you one-sixth of a shirt. If you gave them one, two, three, four, five, six dollars, you would get a full shirt, each of the one-sixth, which connects with what we have right here. So those are two quick formulas to deal with unit price and unit quantity. When you compare different unit prices, it's very important to determine which you're using. They will tell you different things. Like for example, unit price, a better deal will be a lower number. However, unit quantity, you want to get more for your money. So if you use this right here, you want to compare and find the one that gives you the highest number, the most for your, your money. This is, will give you the least amount of money you're spending. Um, but what we really need to do is become familiar with proportions and how it relates to this. Proportions are really a useful tool. All they are is a way of relating two or more, let's say, fractions or ratios. And we're going to use fractions in typical format. Um, and let's write in the information we know, which is that you're spending, I think it was, you get four shirts. Always write those units in, like what you're dealing with, for $24. Well, we want to know the unit price. Let's write UP for that. Well, that means I want to know how many dollars it is for one shirt. Now, I think it's important to not look at the fractions and proportions as whole fractions like we're used to. These are part-to-part -part fractions. This is not. This is four over twenty-four, like a fraction. However, it really is better to look at it as four shirts and then a separate number down here, which is $24. Almost not if it's a whole fraction, but two separate whole numbers, one up here and one down there. 
And then we can compare these proportions in different ways. Um, I like to look across usually, or from numerator to denominator. And let me explain both ways. The first is this. If we're spending, if we um, have four shorts here, and then we have one, four shirts here, excuse me, and one shirt here, that means that this number is four times smaller than this one. So how does that help us? Well, we have the equal sign here. And if this number is four times smaller than this number, this number, whatever it is, has to be four times smaller than this number. We go right across. So $24 divided by four, we're trying to find something four times smaller, is $6. And that's our mystery number, which makes sense. We get $6 to spend for each one shirt. Another way of solving it, sometimes if you look across, the numbers won't match up very nicely. So look from numerator to denominator. So four shorts, well, goes into $24 six times. Because these two fractions are equal, this has to go into this number six times. So you could do one times six, and that would give you x, six. In this case, you would know it's dollars because this is dealing with the dollars place. Let's say we had a, let's say we had five shirts for forty dollars. Well, how would I compare it to the other um, deal? This is more because well, you might be able to see it. If it's five shirts, five s for forty dollars, then one shirt, this is five times smaller, would be eight dollars. That's more than the other. So one way of comparing two unit or two prices is to find the unit price. Um, also, you might realize that if we do 5 divided by 40, that's 1 eighth. And this is interesting because in the previous fraction we had 1 sixth. And people have a tendency to say that, oh, this is a better deal because 1 eighth is smaller than 1 sixth. In the previous example, remember, it was 4 shirts for twenty four dollars and they would be right that this is a better deal than this because it's smaller however they would only be right if we were dealing with unit price these are unit quantities this is telling us not you're spending one eighth but that you get one eighth of a t-shirt for each dollar you spend so if you gave them a dollar they give you one eighth of a t-shirt which is not as good as getting one sixth of a t-shirt for a dollar you get more here you could use proportions or ratios or these equations of division to compare different prices.